Our very dear Father, our precious Lord Jesus, we pray that as we come to thy word, thou wilt speak to our hearts through thy living word. And may we catch the very thing that all the prophets spoke of. They spoke of thee, Lord Jesus. And we see thee in the book. And may we behold the Lamb this morning. May we behold the Christ this morning. May we see that wonderful, wonderful man that God has placed above all. Far above all. So, Lord, give us everyone a new vision of our precious, lovely Lord Jesus. The Lord woke me before midnight. He began to talk to my heart about our lovely Jesus. And I want to share with you some of the things I have seen in the night. It's not stale matter. It's something that came fresh this morning. But I want you to read with me as I will be reading the first psalm and the second. The two are both about our lovely, lovely Lord Jesus. You see, he said to those Pharisees, he searched the scriptures, I'm quoting from the Revised Version. You think that in them you have eternal life, but you will not come unto me, that you might have life. And he said concerning the scriptures, these are they which bear witness of me, which testify of me. And all through, from Genesis to Revelation, the prophets Their message was they were simply channels like David. He said, the spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue. And Peter, speaking of this, he said it was the spirit of Christ in the prophets making known his sufferings and the glory that shall follow. In the Psalms, every Psalm speaks of our lovely Lord Jesus. You start at the beginning. We were reading, uh, singing this morning, what manner of man is this? Well, this is the man that's pictured in the first Psalm. And you'll notice, dear brother Martin, you were speaking of in Ephesians, it's, it's singular, the man. And so, in the Hebrew, it's blessed is the man. And that man is in large type in the Hebrew. It's emphasized. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Who is this man? The Lord showed me in the night. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The man who ever liveth to make intercession for us. And he goes into the holiest before his Father. And he lifts up his holy hands without wrath or doubting the scars in those hands. Our redemption cost him his life blood. He had to go to Calvary. And he's lifting up those holy hands without wrath or doubting. Isn't it wonderful that he's ever living to make intercession for you and for me. Brother Branham, you don't have to worry at all. 
He's praying for you. I remember a dear sister down in Tulsa. She saw a fellow sitting a sinner in the back of the meeting. She said, brother, I don't think she called him brother. She said, say, can I pray for you? I have awful good luck with my prayers. He said, shout sister. She prayed for him. He got saved and filled with the Spirit. He's now the pastor of an Adorain church down in Oklahoma City. And may I say reverently, he has awful good luck with his prayers. When Peter was sleeping, he said, I have prayed for thee, and thy faith fail not. You said, Peter failed. Did he pray and throw? Sure, see Peter on the day of Pentecost. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. That's this lovely man in his life of intercession today. Let's read on about further about this man, the man Christ Jesus, this man who is the mediator. Moses said, God will raise up a man like unto me. He was the mediator of the Old Testament, but Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. A covenant based on better promises. And hallelujah, all the blessings of the new covenant are ours through the mediation of our lovely, lovely Jesus who's always praying for us. And the promise is that of the new covenant we shall all know the Lord. Yes, we shall be known of him. And he'll do everything for us in this new covenant. And as for our sins and our iniquities, he'll remember them no more. So we'll read on about this lovely, lovely Jesus. This man, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, I want to point to him. John Baptist had one message, behold the Lamb of God. That's our one message. Behold our lovely, wonderful, glorious Jesus. This man in the glory the man that came to earth he says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly he didn't walk with the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful but here is the light oh here is the life of our lovely Jesus when the enemy came to speak to him to tempt him he thought the son of God you haven't had anything to eat for 40 days? Make these stones into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that was said to that with the mouth of God. He did. His life had been living in the word. And as you read the story of Jesus, you notice how many times he's quoting from the scriptures, how many times he quoted from the Psalms. And as you and I live in the book, and make this book, the law of God, our meditation day and night. And delight in it. And delight in Him. Yes, as you delight yourself in what is in this book, you begin to delight yourself in Him. And you trust in Him. And commit all to Him. And He does all for you. And you can just rest in Him. And wait patiently the unfolding of all His blessed will. Oh, hallelujah, he'll take us through, not somehow, but triumphantly. And he should be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Oh, yes. He spoke just before he went to Calvary about a tree. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. And the vine is planted by the heavenly stream. It goes down deep into that heavenly stream. And we're the branches. And as we abide in him and he abides in us, we'll bring forth lots of fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit, what is it? Love and joy and peace. And long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness 
and meekness and temperance, and we can't take any glory at all. It all comes from our lovely Jesus, who is the vine, this tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah! He's going to take us through. He's purposing his very best for us, and he's going to do his best for us. Ah, we'll leave the next three verses. Perhaps you can meditate on that another time. But here is the picture of Calvary. Oh, every time the Spirit of God takes us to Calvary. And here in the second psalm, why do the heathen rage? Why do the nations all in, be in such a terrible condition? Peter quoted this after, after Christ had died. Why do the nations rage and the peoples imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth threat themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Jehovah and against his anointed, against his Christ. All the world is against our lovely Lord. And it's, it's a God-hating world. What a tremendous century we are living in. The beginning of the century there were a lot of godly people in Russia. They turned away. They destroyed their king. They destroyed all the two children of God that they could destroy. And that purged there at the beginning of this century. And Russia's rejected God. China's rejected God. Other nations are rejecting God. Same situation. They're against God and they're against his Christ. He's anointed. What's their attitude? Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. The attitude of the world. It's a tremendous century that we're in. I believe it's the last century before the millennium. And we're seeing God's judgment. Brother Bill cut out a number of prophecies by Leela Maguire. These prophecies are being fulfilled this past month. It's things you're seeing in Alaska, she has heard all in that vision and God's judgments are coming the Chinese are coming down on this land I believe they'll come to this very city I believe destruction is coming to this very city I was in Elam in 1953 and a prophet told of the vision God had given him it was a confirmation of a prophet that had just come from Switzerland before the camp meeting was over, another prophetess came and told her the same thing. She said, I'm going up to Alaska to warn those people. She did. In Toronto, not long after that, I was with a sister. She had a, pro a prophecy, or rather a prophetic vision. Just on the same line, she saw the thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of Chinese coming down that Alaska high road. China is purposing to send a two million army to destroy this country. They'll have the nuclear weapons all right. France will supply them. But he that sitteth in the heavens shall love. The Lord shall have them in the region. He's got his own plan, his own purposes. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I said, My king! That's our lovely Lord Jesus. Yet have I said, My King, upon my holy hill of Zion, there he seated at the right hand of God, henceforth expecting until all his enemies be made his footstool. God calls him My King. Who's this man? What man or man is this? He's God's King. He's God's Messiah. Yet have I said, my king upon my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree. Thou art my son. Who is this wonderful man? It's the son of God. That is a light indeed in whom there was no guile when he came to Jesus. And Jesus just revealed how he just saw him under the fig tree. Oh, he said, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. It was a revelation from God. And who is this man? 
He, the Son of God, my Son, is God's abundant King. Get if I said, my King. He's there seated at the right hand of God. And I love to look, read the book of Revelation and we see our God sitting on his throne and with him the Lamb. And all heaven is giving praise to our Father, our very loving Father, and to his blessed Son. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. Thank God for the Lamb. And we hear the Lord Jesus Christ speaking here and giving his testimony. I will declare the decree. Jehovah hath said unto me, Thou art my son. And then speaking of the resurrection, for this is put in connection with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This day have I begotten thee, but he's the first begotten from the dead. God raised him from the dead. That's the very thing that our brother Martin had this morning. God has raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. This lovely son of God. There he is henceforth expecting. And him, all his enemies are going to be his footstool. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee in the nations for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And then read the next verse. Don't think that's just a merely missionary word. See what he's going to do. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. It's the Son of God who brings judgment on this world. All judgment is given under the Son. Then take heed to these last three words. Three verses. Be wise now, therefore. O oh, ye kings of the earth. Just before World War I, a tremendous word came in prophecy through my brother. I sent that word of prophecy to every king in Europe, warning these kings what to do. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord, serve this lovely Jesus with fear. And rejoice with trembling. What is your attitude to be towards him? To kiss the son. Oh, that takes me back to that proud Pharisee. You're going to patronize this prophet of Nazareth. See what kind of stuff he was made of. He invited him to his home. Here came a moment. The woman in the streets. Might be people's a prophecy to discern what kind of woman she is. And she wept. As the tears streamed on his feet, so soon to be nailed to the cross, she wiped his feet with her hair. And quoting from a correct translation, she kissed much those feet. He was soon to be crucified. Those feet were go soon to be nailed to the cross for her. She could sing that song of, after the resurrection and the death of Jesus. That dear brother Grave said he was nailed to the cross for me. For me he died. And she kissed the son. She kissed his feet. And when Jesus was leaving, he spoke to that proud Pharisee, when I came in, you didn't show me the courtesies that really belonged to a guest. You didn't wash my feet or cause my feet to be washed, but this woman coming in, she's washed my feet to the tears. And Simon, 
thou gavest me no kiss. Is he saying that to you and me this morning? Thou gavest me no kiss. Do you ever just get in love with lovely Jesus and just say, Oh, I just love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I kiss thy feet. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. My love is better than mine. I believe he wants us all to be desperately in love with Jesus. And the word to all is kiss the Son. Kiss the Son. Be reconciled to the Son. Be like that poor woman that he commanded. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and he perish from the way. The Revised Version is that he will soon be angry. As the anger of the Lord we shall see in the Revelation. How men are calling on God. No, no, they're not calling on God. I pray many things, they're not calling upon him. They're calling upon the rocks, the mountains, to fall upon them, to hide them from the face of him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. God's wrath will be manifest soon. All judgment is given unto this man. He it is who shall judge. And where does he begin to judge? Right in the church. He weighs our spirits. And the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. And a contract, a crushed heart. That's what he had. Our dear sister Crouch has just been up to Zion. They're the place where they're always praying for the crushed spirit, the contrite spirit, the broken spirit, the poverty of spirit. May God have a people of a contrite and humble, crushed heart. That's what he's looking for in you and me. And then there's this lovely word. First Psalms begins, blessed is that man. And then, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Oh, we enter into all the blessednesses just by trusting him and trusting his blessed work upon Calvary's cross. Oh, I like to say with Francis Ridley, have a go, Lord Jesus, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. And I trust you to keep me trusting you. And so we enter into that blessedness of this man. And he shares with us all the blessings. And we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavens, in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love our Father. He's put us into Christ Jesus the Lord. And in him, fells as we were seeing this morning, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We're all conscious that we're very incomplete in ourselves, but in him, we're made complete. He fills us. Fills us to overflowing. And we're like that dear sister in Cincinnati, no, it was Cleveland. She said, I can't hold much, but bless God, I can spill over a lot. So, hallelujah. Let's just drink and drink and drink of him who is the fountain of life. And trust him and be blessed in him. Amen.